press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. Factory design pattern in general is an opposite of the singleton design pattern and it is one of the second most recently used design pattern after singleton design pattern because lots of people use the factory design pattern after they use the singleton design pattern. What factory design pattern defines is it doesn't expose the instantiation or the creation logic. Let's note it down. So it doesn't expose the instantiation or the creation logic. Instead, subclasses create the objects. Subclasses create the objects or the instances. There is generally a common interface. Uh, you can consider it as an interface or an abstract class. You can have a common uh, abstract or an interface which defines what needs to be done in the factory and generally factories are used when we use it with framework creation it is used when we create frameworks and the client or the implementation uses the factories so that is what factory provides us there is also a contract provided by the factory that is why people go with the framework because it designs the framework in such a way that you have to do it in such a fashion and you have to implement the necessary steps let's try implementing a factory design pattern uh, in the previous example of the builder design pattern we created a phone right we are going to use a similar example we are going to create a phone so we are going to create different specifications in a phone so we are going to try and create different phone um, models like for example iPhone or the Android let's try creating an iPhone and an Android right for that we need a specification what is the specification denote so specification could be an interface where every every um, what do you call a feature or a part of the phone constitute a specification so I'm going to overwrite a method called I'm going to provide a method called public word by default everything is public so I'm just saying void uh, description of the specification right and the specification needs to be implemented by let's say uh, what specification first we need uh, we let's say we provide a 12 megapixel camera or we can say an Android camera And we need to implement the interface and then just say yes and this particular file name is gone here let me try renaming it i'll just say it's a 12 megapixel camera same way i'll create some more specification uh, let me try creating I created iPhone camera we need a front panel let's say I'm just gonna say panel I'm just gonna say iPhone panel and I'm gonna say Android panel We also need the processor and I'll just stop it. I'll say iPhone processor is a A10 chip, let's say, right? A9 or A10 chip, I'll just say A10. Uh, for the Android processor, I'll just say snapdragon 625 chip for the android panel uh, i'll just say i'll say sandstone finish for the iphone panel i'll say charger glass panel something like that 
for the iPhone camera, I'll just mention it as uh, let's say 16 megapixel, right? So we have some camera implementation based on the specification. So this is just a specification interface. We have implemented different types of camera. Now what we need is a, we need a phone, right? We need to create a phone, isn't it? Instead, I'll create the Android phone and the iPhone, right? So I'll create something called as an Android phone based on some specific features. For that, we need to have a phone. So I'll create a framework or a phone interface, a phone abstract class, so that we, we can use that while implementing the Android phone and iPhone. So that way we know what we need to add. I'm going to create a phone which is going to be an abstract class. So I'll just say class for now. I'm just going to create it as an abstract class. I'm going to have a public phone constructor and I'm going to say create phone. And this create phone is going to be an abstract method. So that way we will create a phone which we wanted also while creating a phone what do i need i need some stuff right i need to add the specification so i'm going to say protected so that we can use it in the implementation we need to add the list of specification to a phone i'll just create an empty array list so that way we can add it to the specification so we can add lots of different specifications to the phone so i have created a phone abstract class where you can add different specifications to it and create phone will be adding those specification while creating a phone we will be adding the specification right so this is an abstract class now what do we need is a implementation for it we are going to implement it using the android phone i'll just say implement methods what do we need to add in the specification? We need to add some stuff, right? In the specification, we are going to add new Android camera, new Android panel, and also the Android processor. So our Android phone is done. Same way, we need to create an iPhone. We need to implement this. I'll just say iPhone. I'll just say it as an iPhone. So we need to implement the create method. What do we need? We need to add the specification. We need to add new iPhone camera. We need to add the iPhone panel and also we need to add the iPhone processor. So that's it. So we have created an iPhone and an Android using the phone which allowed us to create a phone using some specification and we have added that specification to the phone. We have added the specification to the phone now. What do we need now? We need to create a factory out of it, correct? So we wanted to create a factory because we wanted to create a factory uh, design pattern. If you provide a type of phone, we will be getting that type of phone created out of a factory. So we need to create a factory. So we are going to create a phone factory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class which is called the phone factory. So this factory creates a phone. So while naming your factories, make sure that you are able to understand that factory first. So phone factory is going to create a factory. So what do we need? We are going to get a phone. So I'm going to say get phone and I need to provide some phone object. Let's do that. Before that, I need to return a phone, right? So this get phone is going to create a phone out of it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to expect a type of phone, right? I can create an enum for that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an enum. So instead of having strings, I'm going to create an enum. So I'm going to say phone type. So let this be an enum. That way I can know what type of phone it is. If I say Android or iPhone. So I have an enum called Android and iPhone. I'll just mention the phone type here. So that way we just pass the phone type and we can directly use the switch to do phone type. Right. So I'll just say case of uh, Android. I'll just do something. 
I'm just going to return new Android phone and I'm going to break it if it is an iPhone I'm going to return a new iPhone and I'm going to break it again if it is a case default sorry if it is a default case I'm just going to return mal right we don't even have to break it because return will directly break the statement right that's cool and just remove everything here so yeah the phone factory has a method called public phone and let's make this static because this factory we don't have to create an object right if you make it as a static method we don't have to create an object out of it and we can directly use this particular get phone method to directly get the different types of phone so this is how you can create a factory uh, let's use the factory in our implementation so i'm going to say factory example so public static void main here how do we use the factory using the phone factory i need to get a type of phone so i'm going to use phone factory dot get phone and i need to pass a type of phone and i'm going to say phone type dot android if i pass the android type I'm going to get the Android type of phone. So I'll just go, I'm just going to say Android. If I pass iPhone, I'm going to get an iPhone. Right? So let me try doing a print of Android and print of iPhone just to show how these values are printed. Meanwhile, let's go to the phone here. And try to print the phone. I'll just try to override the two strings so that we can see the specification. So let me run this program. So what we have done here, if you, if you notice, we have created a phone factory. Using the phone factory, we are getting a phone, and we are passing the type of phone as Android, which is going to create a phone for us, and it is going to return a new phone for us. So all these objects, if you notice here, all these are different types of objects. And if you see, I think I have not overwritten the specification, right? But yeah, you, you basically got the point, right? If you notice here, the specifications are different. The first phone had Android camera and Android panel and also the Android processor. The next one had the iPhone camera, iPhone processor and the iPhone panel. So that is how you can create different objects. And if you are using um, the factory again to retrieve an object or to retrieve the phone, it will create new objects because it is not a singleton it is going to create new instances every time so if i want to create an iphone again i just create another instance and then i can print it and see that it will return a different object instance so every time you use factory and retrieve the phone you can create new new instances because that is how we have created a factory but sometimes people use a factory to return the same instance however that is not exactly the factory pattern which you wanted because factory means every time it creates a new product so as the name suggests if you get a product from a factory you create new instance of a product right if you buy a product out of a phone factory you obviously get a new instance of the same product right so that is what factory denotes same way in this case we had a phone factory using the phone factory we pass a phone type using that type we are creating different phone so if you compare this with our um, concept which we wrote in the readme factory doesn't expose the instantiation or the creation of creation logic yes factory did not expose because we just directly used the get form and all the creation is done by the subclasses yep the subclasses which are there inside the factory created the objects if you notice the sub fact class which created the object is the phone phone created the pan, uh, created the phone because we have overwritten the create phone and that is where all the specs got created last one is the common abstract or an interface yep we had a common abstract interface we had a, a common abstract class called the phone and also we had some interface called specification but uh, you can use interface as well instead of the phone abstract class here i wanted to show how the abstract classes create the phone object that is why i had used abstract but if you are uh, willing to use interface you can use it already because in java 8 you have interfaces 
you can write default methods in the interface. The last one is framework or the client. The implementation uses the factories. Yep, if you notice here, this factory can be used uh, as a framework. We don't have any framework creation here. However, if let's say you're creating a framework and you're creating a life cycle, you can integrate the factory and you say that, okay, first I need to use the factory to create an object and you will have to implement your um, objects. For example, if you have a different type of phone, let's say a Symbian or a Windows phone, you will have to now create your Windows uh, phone implementation and then you can add it to your enum which is the phone type and that gets added to the factory by default and your framework will align to that so that is how you can define your framework so that is how you can create your uh, factory design pattern so this is how uh, factory design pattern is created i hope you guys understood what is factory design pattern i'll upload the code to github repository for your reference you can directly take it from there uh, if you want to know any common examples of factory design pattern which we already have in the JVM, then you can take a look at calendar. Calendar uses a similar um, way. You can use calendar or you can use the number format. Number format also uses the factory design pattern where you can have get different types of number formats. Same way with calendar, you can get different types of calendar from the calendar uh, pattern. So for example, if I want to show that, You can just say calendar.get instance and you can do a get of a typical type of field where you can say calendar um, type calendar itself. So I think calendar itself is a type in itself. You can, yep, you can get it like this. So day of a month, you can get directly something like this what is the current day so this is a type of uh, a factory design pattern okay this is the type of factory design pattern you can see in the jvm itself now coming to the disadvantages of the factory design pattern let's put them down the first design disadvantage is it is very complex if you had noticed here we had created so many classes and so many code to achieve the factory design pattern so under the hood it works as simple as that however we had to create lots of code and it is very complex to create lots of code the other disadvantages is the creation happens only in the subclass which in itself abstracts us too many things because you won't even know what is happening so you will have to go to the factory design pattern to understand what is happening under the hood so that itself is a disadvantage and when you do lots of refactoring it will be a tedious task because there are too many classes and if you want to do refactoring of your code it will be too much so that is the only disadvantage so these are the different disadvantages if you know how to handle factory design pattern in a more controlled way then it is easy for you however just keep in mind there are advantages and disadvantages using design patterns in general when you are using in your code so you should know when to use what type of design pattern and when to use not so that's it about factory design pattern meet again in the next video thank you very much